Welcome back everyone. I'm Jason and you're watching Jason Jensen Trains. In today's episode, we are building a kit from kcworkshop.com called Lobster Co-op. All right, well, we have a lot to do, so let's get to it. So the first thing I did was I took the walls and I took a wire brush and went over them to rough them up. I then took a pounce wheel and made nail holes. I then took my blade and lifted some of the boards. I would first make a cut right where the nails are, then lift it up. So I want this structure to look really, really old. So I made the, the walls look pretty rough. Then after all that was done, I braced the back of the walls. So everything is braced. Now the next step is to stain all these. We're going to start with murky brown. Then we're going to try a new color that I just received called Shadow Gray. Now I'm going to do both sides since you can really see into this building. So instead of the shadow color, I'm going to use Oak give it kind of a warm a warm feel oh yeah that looks great love it <laughs> oh I just love these stains hopefully you can tell the difference I haven't done this section here but this is done Okay, now we're going to use the uh, shadow gray, but we're going to go just along the bottom to give it the uh, look that it's maybe starting to rot along the bottom. Okay, I don't know if you'll be able to see the three different colors that we used, but Man, it just gives it a beautiful look. Okay, next we're going to use light avocado. And we're going to mix a little bit of sea glass with it. <laughs> Shake up real well. The light avocado by itself would probably, probably work, but just to give us a unique color, we'll add a little bit of this to it. I don't know if you, hopefully you can see how much I'm adding. Now you have to remember that acrylic paints darken when they dry so it's not quite as light as it looks now we're going to use a thin brush and notice i'm not getting it on the silver part it's only on the bristles 
and it's about a little more than halfway up. That's the proper way to load a brush. Now you see how much is on there. What we're going to do is lightly drag it over it. Sorry, I'm trying to do it so you can see, but um, maybe, maybe if I zoom in. So I'm lightly dragging the brush over it. I want a lot of the paint to be chipped off. This is a hard technique. It's not really dry brushing um, and it's not, you're not painting it solid. This part in the front gets a structure um, put here so it's covered up, but I still, I just want to paint it so that you can see the technique. Now I am definitely dry brushing. There's very little paint on there and I'm just dry brushing over it. Just really towards the top though, not the bottom. And then if you want to, take a sponge, tear off a little chunk really hope you can see that good uh, I think it's a neat technique so on the little structure that pops out on the front I'm going to completely sponge it so now I'm using odorless thinner and track wash I didn't want to tilt that hopefully you can see it but it's called track wash and I'm going over the nail holes so what I do first is just use the odorless thinner and drag it down over it then dip it into the wash it really doesn't take much very little and then just lightly drag it over that you can go a little heavier towards the bottom So to experiment, I used slimy grime and a shader called Ash Black. So Ash Black and slimy grime. Now this is an enamel and this is water-based. They don't mix, but I mixed them in the dish and then brushed them on and it's cool because you get they separate 
because they won't mix. So I went along the bottom of some of these. And it really gives it a moldy, rotting look. So now I'm taking my original green and very lightly dry brushing, especially over the lines, over the nail hole lines. So it's not so um, dramatic, maybe. We're just dry brushing. Okay, so I just finished staining the wood for the pier. And uh, I know my fingers are stained. And it says right on the bottle. Um, where does it say? It says somewhere on here to wear gloves. Um, so, so, but I didn't. So, anyways, um, to tell you what I did, um, I used four colors and um, for all of the strip wood and the pilings, I just dipped it right into the bottle. So I dipped it, then flipped it over and dipped the other half. Um, I started with raw umber, aged barn wood, murky brown, and black. And I don't know if you're able to see this. It's just a beautiful aged wood look. Right here, directions. Shake well before using, wear protective gloves. Wear protective gloves. <laughs> I wanted to show you quick, and I don't know if you'll be able to see it well, but the stained wood is a beautiful contrast with the uh, green and white trim. It really complements it. All right, well, let's uh, get started building this. I'm going to go wash up quick. Well, as you can see, I have the pier put together. Um, I brought this one over to make sure that I was at the uh, correct height. You'll notice there's little squares on the front. And uh, I put them on the front of here too. Those are brown construction paper. So all I do is cut a thin strip. It might be a 32nd of an inch. The size isn't real important. You don't want them to be too big. I made that one a little too thin. Okay, so there is our thin piece. Then... Just cut squares. And then put some glue. Um, take a scrap piece of paper and put some white Elmer's glue on it and stab one of the squares and dip it in the glue and then place it on the model. Then after you've got them all on and they're completely dry, take either a sharp number two pencil or a black pen. This one is 005 
and put a dot in the center. And I'll show you again what this looks like up close. Hopefully that's uh, focusing. And we'll get some rope put on there, just like on here. And then I've also got the uh, the windows. These windows are plastic. They're from Titchy Train Group. And they come in the kit. Now the rest of the doors um, are all laser cut. So we'll have to get those painted and put on. I wanted to point out the white that I'm using on the trim and windows. It is actually sand gray. And by itself, it, it really does look gray. But when you put it up against another color, it then looks white. But it's not stark, not a stark white, so it doesn't look out of place on the layout. The doors are all laser cut. So we're gonna paint them first with iced coffee. Then we're gonna make a thin wash of bittersweet chocolate. Then we'll take a sponge and sponge on the sand gray. Okay, now we'll make a thin wash with bittersweet chocolate. And you actually could use raw umber. Okay, very thin, very thin. Again, sand gray. We need to get a sponge here. Um, you can see I'm picking a little bit off. There's little pieces. They're all sticking together, but it's little pieces so that it's kind of jagged. We'll go heavier towards the top of the door and less at the bottom. And don't forget to rotate your sponge so that you don't get a pattern. They don't quite line up, but you get the idea. Okay, so as you can see, I cut my doors out in the trim. And what's great is these are peel and stick. So you peel the back off. Perfect, now we'll cut a piece of acetate that is a rectangle for the back, then we'll peel the back off and stick the acetate on. So I'm getting my doors glued in place. Now they're very delicate, so you need to be careful these two pieces go together like this. Now the back of this has to be peeled off. And you want to go very slow. Because sometimes the laser cutting on the front, if it's a little too deep, those pieces can break apart which is okay, you just stick them on to the door. Uh, so far, these have not broken apart. Okay, let me give you a rundown on 
how I'm doing the uh, the roofing on it. And this panel goes on the other side, um, over on this side here. So the first thing I do is I paint the underside of it. That is the overhang, my off white. It's the uh, sand gray, and then I paint the edge of it. I then took some black construction paper and painted it black. I then took, I just cut a piece, put it on there, and then took sandpaper and sanded some of that paint off so that the construction paper actually shows through. It just gives it some texture. Then I start my wood shingles. Um, the wood shingles, I don't have a brown sheet, but I do have a gray sheet um these do not come in the kit you can buy them from kc workshop though uh, buy them from the same website that is selling the uh, kit and um what i do is um if i was going to use gray on these which would have looked fine um i'd have done probably two or three shades of gray acrylic paint and just sort of dry brushed going the opposite direction of the lines that are cut so we're going this way so maybe three shades and then after that's dry take a colored pencil and draw lines and use maybe three different shades, even maybe a black. Um, I even used a white colored pencil. And just drew lines down. Then with my knife, I just lifted some of those individual shingles. Now, you'll notice I left a spot here and I've left other spots. I am going to rust some of the corrugated panels and cover those spots with uh, the rusted corrugated metal. Now again, the uh, corrugated panels do not come in the kit, but you can buy them from KC Workshop. So um, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to take 8 inch thick strip wood square and I am just going to run a piece down the center I'll probably actually glue it in here as a support then I can glue that on after it's done I wanted to quick show you that the kit comes with a piece of black construction paper that you can cut into thin strips for tar paper. And then it does come with a small section of gray shingles for this little building here in the front. So our roof is completed. I even found some small little finials to put on each end of the roof, just in my little box of castings. Um, you can see I've started to add some rope. 
the rope is thread used for sewing denim so it's pretty heavy it has a nice uh, texture to it after I get it glued in place I usually just take some dirty water that my brush is in and then brush over the rope just to kind of dirty it up um, this lobster comes in the kit I wanted to show you quick um, lobster traps by Seaport Model Works. And you get six of them for $12.95. So they're brass. And they're flat so I just spray them with a gray primer and they easily fold up and then dry brush them with some tan maybe put some rust on the corners um, incredible incredible detail okay so the model is complete um, it comes with a lot of details, but then I added some of my own. Um, the netting I buy at a fabric store, and it's called Tool. And you can see I have a whole bunch of it. And it's used for making wedding veils. Um, this will probably last me the rest of my life. Um, but it's just great, I think, for netting. And then I use some stains to uh, dirty it up. Um, here's some on this side. I also added some barnacles and all that is is end scale ballast and they sell that in tan gray either one would work uh, then I use some slimy um, slimy green slimy grime for moss on it. Beautiful kit. Um, I'm very impressed with it. There's so much that you can do with this. In hindsight, um, it would have been nice to take scale 2x4s and put studs on the inside of the walls. And then I could have completely detailed the interior. Um, you could even put a light inside of it to light it up. Um, and then if you want to, this could be turned into, say, a factory. Raise it up on a uh, cement or stone foundation. Have a loading dock in the front, a loading dock in the back maybe that is right up against the tracks. Um, there's so much that you can do with this kit. I, I just am very impressed with it. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Um, again, I just loved putting this together. And this is from caseysworkshop.com. 
So be sure to visit their website. And uh, be sure to take a moment and subscribe to the channel. And until next time, stay motivated and happy modeling, everyone. <laughs>